Well, welcome to Mike Wolf and Dakota Jones uh, to our Ultra 168 update. Uh, we're here in La Palma. How are you, gentlemen? Quite well. Good. Mike? Good. Yeah, good. So, well done on the weekend, uh, Dakota. Hard fought win. You've had a few um, days now to think about it. You've, had a, you've slept, you've ate, had a couple of recovery runs. Any new reflections on the race? Um, I, I don't know. Uh, I just, I'm, I'm happy with my performance and um, I'm really, uh, you know, kind of surprised but happy that it played out the way it did and it's uh, definitely kind of made me think about what I want to do in the future, like yeah. racing wise. Yeah. And do you enjoy the, 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 the battle? I mean, you had Killian tucked in behind you for quite a few kilometers. Is that your style of racing or do you like to get out front and, and uh, blast no. the field apart? I was just running my own race, so yeah. like I, I never try to go out front off the, at the beginning of the race. But um, I really just tried to run my own race. And I mean, it was really exciting to go up front like that, especially running with a guy like Killian. Um, and to be, and then in, later in the stages of the race when Andy caught us, it was, it was like kind of going back and forth. It was really exciting. So just for those who are nowhere near the front end of the field, what goes through your head? You, are you checking all the vital signs? Are you looking at, you know, what have I got left in the tank here? Are you really just toughing it out by then? I mean, it's, it's like really kind of managing pain i mean yeah. i don't know it's it's like it's painful yeah but it's like it's about just seeing how long you can hang on yeah. and and seeing how and like kind of wondering about how much longer the other guys you run it with can hang on and if you can keep up with them and like um, I, I really worry about how much i'm eating because yeah. by the late stages in the race i don't want to eat it all ever right. again yeah. but um you know you have to yeah and so it's like i really focus on on how much i can get away with not eating You've been around some of the more experienced runners now on the circuit for a while. Do you get a sense of the gamesmanship that goes on amongst other runners? When you, you know, do you get a chance to observe their body language and think, well, he's hurting more than I am? Or is it really, are you so focused on yourself that you have to block, block all of that out? Yeah, I don't pay attention to that yeah. at all. It's, it's all about me. <laughs> just focus on myself. You know? Okay, well, just next question is not about you. Um, Mike, how are you after the race? Um, good, good result for you or...? Uh, no, not not the result I wanted. Um, I mean, overall, the experience here has been great, and um, running the race was awesome. It's a gorgeous course, um, but I more or less had to, uh, before even the halfway point, resign myself to just enjoying where I was and being out on the course. Uh, I just just had a I, one of those inexplicable off days where, um, you know, I ran the first. 20 plus K uh, right behind Dakota and Killian where they were just inside of me with a little like chase pack um, and mentally I was in it you know Dakota and I have raced each other a few times yeah. now and recently uh, at the 50 mile distance we ran together more or less the entire race um, back in December in the States and that was the that was the kind of race experience I was hoping for here was to really just like Dakota did just go for it and see what happens and um, mentally I was there but the body just wasn't responding and um, it's like I just didn't have that top gear on Saturday and I was bummed but still gonna enjoy being here. So what what do you both do if you don't have the race the perfect race how do you go back and reassess do you just put it to one side and go okay that was last week uh, focus on the next one or do you actually reflect on it? Well I mean I I guess it's kind of a, for me, it's kind of a balancing act. I mean, you don't want to overanalyze things, I guess, but I'll certainly, I mean, I try to, one concrete thing that I do is I keep track of my training, so I look back at what I've done over the last few months and see how I've felt and see if I've done things that maybe weren't the smartest to do. Um, but other than that, I, you know, I'll take the days after the race and this week to, to let myself kind of the race experience settle in and see what went wrong and other than that then it's time to move yeah. on yeah. to cut it your, your view on that i think that every race is a learning experience yeah. and I, I try to reflect on every every race and see like what happened and what i did right as far as like the actual race went and like how i felt and try to extrapolate back to like i maybe felt better on this climb because i did this certain type of training yeah. or, or vice or you know so on like that um so you probably learn most from uh races that you're not happy with because then it's kind of like well i had a bad race why was it what yeah. did i change and you can really look back over it um i mean i had probably the best race of my life on saturday um and so 
yeah, I mean, I, it's it's definitely encouraging going in the future. You know, I mean, it's like I probably won't want to change a whole lot, yeah. you know, and going for the rest of the year. That's good to hear. And, and Mike, you've, you've seen Dakotas over the last uh, couple of years emerge as a runner. What's your observations of this guy's potential? About Dakota? Yeah. Um, well, he showed his potential on Saturday. Yeah. And, you, know, um, you know, a lot of people are saying that, you know, the young guys are the future of the sport. Mm-hmm. Dakota's the future of the sport. Killian. I mean, it's true, you know, the, the, up, the guys like Dakota are, you know, redefining what what's possible and um, my observation is Dakota is and over the last few years he he physically his physical capabilities he's got what it takes to run at the top but it's like last weekend and the last few races I feel like Dakota's raced that it's that mental edge that he's developed now that he knows he can go out there and run his race and still destroy everyone and that's that's what it. I mean, you got to have both to yeah. be able to run at the top. So, yeah. look, we use an expression at Ultra One Six Eight: um, listen to everyone, follow no one. Um, Dakota, what's the best piece of advice someone ever has ever given you about preparing for an ultra, or even being in an ultra event? Well, I, I mean, the best piece of advice. I, don't know. Uh, I think it's it's really the the thing that I've really found is like what Mike was talking about. Is, uh, is the mental power, you yeah. know, like, you can be as strong as you want, but at a certain point it becomes about just, like, really knowing how to deal with a lot of fatigue and a lot of physical challenges, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, when it gets hard physically, it gets hard mentally, and, yeah. and you can deal with it from the top down, um, so I don't really, I can't think of any, like, in, advice right. specifically, yeah. but, yeah, I yeah. mean, if you can develop your your mental toughness yeah. um, over a series of years, I yeah. think, um, then you'll have a good, a, an edge. Cool. Um, talking about sacrifice next, uh, Mike, I understand that you've, uh, you've sacrificed a, a career in law, I take it, um, to, to focus more on your running and, and, and Dakota talking earlier about um, the sacrifices you're going to have to make to, to perform at the highest level. Your views, I mean, it's early days, I think, for you, Mike, but what drives you to do that? Why, why have you done it? Well, yeah, I mean, I literally just quit my job a couple of weeks ago, uh, so it's definitely fresh and new to me. But um, it's, it's, for me, it got to the point where I, I started thinking about making this decision and ultimately did over really probably the past like six or eight months where it was serious. And um, it, it all comes down to really, the I guess, the passion for the sport and... You know, I love I love the competition. I love the running, um, and I'm not getting any younger. I'm 34. I feel like I'm more or less in my peak years, and I have the sponsor support to be able to have this kind of opportunity, uh, and I have the opportunities now. Like we're we're participating in this week with this uh, Skyrunner conference. You know, to come over and do this stuff and. I had a serious professional job, and yeah. you, you just simply can't do it all. Uh, and it was more or less like I was trying to work two full-time jobs at the same time. And so it came down to having this opportunity and the support to be able to do it. And so it's just one of those things in life. You know, it's like I don't want to look back and regret not having at least tried, even if it doesn't work out. So I uh, decided to go for it and follow the passion. So hearing that, Dakota, you know, to, to, to make the most of his ability, you, you've got some outstanding abilities. What, what's, what sort of sacrifices do you see in order to fulfill your passion? Well, I mean, like you said, I just dropped out of college. Um, and a lot of people kind of equate my dropping out of college with running. And I mean, I'm not going to deny that that was a factor for sure. But I just wasn't really enjoying school. I didn't think I had a reason to be there. I just wasn't trying. I didn't care. Um, I, I was spending a lot of money. I don't know. There's a million reasons. But I, I had this running thing to kind of, you know, as an alternative that was legitimate. And so I'm um, following that. And I mean, I think it's just like what Mike says. Like, this is what I really like to do. It makes me happy. Um, and I'm good at it. And I want to pursue it while I can, while it still makes me happy and while I'm still, like, kind of in a place where I can do well. Um, I'm sure there will be lots of sacrifices to make, but I think the the way I want to kind of live is to do these things that, you know, that, that make me happy, right? Um, I guess there's kind of like, on one level, you need to support yourself. and. 
new thing, I think, in the sport, but pretty exciting. And so I figure I'll go for it. And, uh, you know, in the future, I think my sacrifices will probably come in the form of, like, sacrifice of trail running because I'll, I'll want to do something else, and that'll be okay, too. Cool. That's good to hear. And uh, you both have sponsors. How, how do you find the relationship of an athlete and, a spon and, and working with a sponsor? For my part, my sponsors are awesome. Um, I mean, I just find that, I mean, I run for Montreal Mountain Hardware and Cliff Bar, and they're all just, like, I mean, they're just people like us, you know? They're just uh, kind of, they're in the corporate world, sure, but they're all in the outdoors. They, they, they run, they mountain bike, ski, all these sports. And so, I mean, I can totally talk with them, on a, you know, just like I'm talking to anyone. Um, and then they also support me with product and with money. And in return, they expect, you know, me to wear their logo and kind of be successful with their logo. And also, I can give feedback and help them improve yeah. their product. And so far, it's been a really uh, healthy symbiotic relationship. Um, I don't see it as like a corporate uh, entity yeah. by any means, even if by definition it is. It's just sort of um, two like-minded um, entities kind of working together. And Mike, did you did you go to your sponsor? Did they come to you in terms of? Um changing from a career to, to focusing on running? Well, they came not specifically to, like to changing my career path or taking a break from full-time work, but they definitely came to me with an offer of, you know, a better contract and more support and able for me to, to run more, yeah. So how do you guys, I mean, you all hang out together, you train together often, you race. Um, how do you see each other in terms of the some people getting more, some less uh, in terms of sponsorship deals. Some people make it on their own. Uh, others seem to be quite privileged if you take the Killians of this world. How does that sit with you? I mean, the sport is, is expanding rapidly, but there's some people may get left behind. Others may jump on the bandwagon and maximize it. Any, any opinions on this? Yeah, I think that everybody recognizes that we all, I mean, because we all are kind of competing on the same level, right? And we're all trying to make money off of the sport. And everybody recognizes that we're not trying to, like, step on each other to get more money. But, you know, at the same time, we're going to do what it takes to support ourselves. Yeah. Um, and I'd say to a certain level, there's, you know, kind of just like a delicate... We, we like, tread delicately, yeah. right, right? Like, I'm not going to ask Mike how much he's making from the North Face. Yeah and expect him to ask the same for me. I mean, we don't like talk numbers very often. I don't think that's really necessary. I think, you know, I want Mike to make money and be successful and be, um, uh, be able to support himself because then ultimately I get someone to compete with. Yeah. And uh, racing in, in other parts of the world, you've obviously flown over here. Uh, do you feel that this is gonna become the, the, the new norm, getting over jet lag, language barriers, cultural differences is now part of your training programs? Yeah, I mean, I think it'll, I think it's going to become more of the norm for uh, a lot of elite athletes at least a couple times a year. I mean, up until the last few years, it was very rare that at least a lot of Americans ever came to Europe or went anywhere else. It was like you had your race season planned out and it was always stateside and you never looked Especially really beyond ultras. That. Yeah, especially in ultras. Until UTMB kind of got on the map. Uh, that seemed to be more of the first big ultra, anyway, uh, that folks started to travel for. But yeah, I think it'll start to be more the norm that people travel internationally for um, at least a couple races out of the year. And, uh, I know people already talk, you know, just this week, folks have talked about, you know, like coming over to Europe for a whole season. You know, yeah. to do the Skyrunner series or to participate more fully in, you know, races in Europe. So I, I, I would get suggest to see that people are going to start doing stuff like that. I mean, you got Killian coming to the U.S. for two months to do a whole slew of races. So yeah, you'll, I think you'll see more of that. That's great. And um, any chance we'd ever see you in our part of the world, down under Australia, New Zealand? Uh, either of you ever? been down there to explore and, and even considered a race down there. Killian came down last year with a big entourage of yeah, Sullivan runners. I'd love and to go check that place out. Yeah. I've never been down there, yeah. but it's, it's awesome. I, I mean, everything I know about it sounds exciting. Yeah. It's a totally new place to explore. That'd be great. There's plenty of races down there. It's just a matter of fitting it into the schedule. Yeah, yeah. yeah definitely. Oh, I'd love to. And also, um, 
teammate of mine, Jez Braggs, going to be yeah. down in... Uh, this weekend? Yeah, yeah, this weekend, but also uh, in December, he's planning to go to New Zealand to try to do the first uh, full crossing of that new trail that was put through. Wow. Yeah, but, yeah they've, well, they've linked all the trails of New yeah. Zealand, and obviously the, the biggest uh, income generator for, for New Zealand is tourism and trail walking, and, and they convert these trails yeah. into races. So. So he's going to be attempting that, is he? He's going to try to put a record on it, about 50 days, I think. And um, I've been talking to him about maybe joining him for yeah. that. So we'll see what happens. Well, we'll definitely be involved in that, checking <laughs> that out so in yeah. our backyard. And uh, yeah. Hey, look, guys, appreciate your time. I know you've done a lot of this this week as the, um, the, the, the world's media has been on you. And, and it's, it's um, been hectic times. You've got to get yourselves up for another race this weekend. And we will move camp to the mainland. So... Uh, Good luck at the, the races on the weekends and good luck with the rest of the season. Um, and thanks for sharing some time with Ultra 168. Thanks a lot. No problem.